Well, last week, uh, President Trump announced that he was uh, crafting an executive order to make it easier uh, with regard to cash flows and retirement accounts. What do you think, and will it make a difference? Well, the executive order is to try to get Treasury and Labor to adopt some regulations that will allow small businesses to band together to do 401ks that are sometimes too expensive or have too much regulation or too much fiduciary obligation for individual small businesses so they don't want to take that risk. So it's a very good thing to help achieve better retirement outcomes for millions of Americans. But as you and I have discussed before, it doesn't have anything to do with public plans. It's only for corporate plans and small businesses adopting 401ks together. That's a very, very good idea, but it leaves public plans right where they are. And, you know, whenever we come back to state and local pension plans, it really is a dire story. Uh, Moody's uh, just had a write-up saying that uh, there's holes in, in this plan with regard to how much is set aside and how much needs to pay out, be paid out. That right. could be $4 trillion, which is the size of the German economy. Is there any progress being made, especially considering stocks in the U.S. are near record highs? Shouldn't that alleviate some of the pressures? Well, you know, the real problem in public plans, unfortunately, you can't say it's a ticking time bomb. It's more like a slow leak. The fact of the matter is that people in states and throughout the country have not made their contributions for years and years and years. So when you make a promise and you don't fund it, you don't put the assets there, the liabilities continue to grow. But if you haven't put the assets in, the assets aren't growing. And in the around 2010, people were putting in about 80 percent of what they were supposed to put in. Now they're putting in about 90%. That sounds a lot better, but that still leaves a 10% hole across the board for whether or not states and cities are actually making the contributions they're supposed to make. And you know what, as a market person, what really hits me, Charles, is, is that they've given up quite a bit of return in the equity markets the last 20 months. And even though they've upped the percentage, we have no idea what may uh, be ahead of us with regard to markets and investments and return. And the but final you know, minute we have, Charles, how can, the, how can states and local uh, managers of this, this capital try to protect themselves and diversify but yet accumulate faster? Well, I think the really important point to make on terms of investments, Rick, is that most pensions have returned reasonably well. If you took the average return of a public pension over the last 30 years, it's around 9%. So the issue in pension underfunding is not really whether the chief investment uh, officers it's and putting the, the money staffs. in to begin with. You got to put it in in the first in. place. If you don't put it in, you're never going to fill the hole. I see. Now, is it possible that the Trump administration over time is the, the, the sector that deals with that management is improving to put more uh, hard and fast rules to avoid some of these potholes of contribution? Quickly, we're almost out of time. Yeah, the federal government doesn't have too much to say about states, but Moody's does. And Moody's makes the point that if you're not funding your pension, it's going to be the equivalent of a tax hike in the future because you're going to still have to pay for police and teachers and firefighters, et cetera. Yes, the services that all use. 